after this video lecture. Students will be able to convert between units of pressure, be able to identify pressure um, and how it changes with elevation, um, and of course identify standard temperature and pressure conditions. So let's just quickly talk about some physical characteristics associated with gases. Uh, we know that gases assume the volume and shape of their containers. So whatever the volume is of the container it's held in, it's going to completely fill that um, container by expanding um, and basically uh, taking the shape of said container. Um, we know that gases are the most compressible state of matter, and that makes sense because there's lots of spacing between the particles. Um, we also know that gases are going to mix evenly and completely when confined in the same container. Um, this is why, you know, when we're sitting in a classroom, uh, people in the front of the classroom have the same quantity of oxygen as those sitting in the back because there's an even distribution of oxygen within that room. Um, and of course, gases have lower densities uh, than liquids and solids, um, and that has to do with the volume associated uh, with the particle spacing. So pressure um, is just force over area. So if I apply a force over a specific area, depending on the size of that area, that's going to di dictate the amount of pressure. Um, the bigger the area, uh, the lower the pressure, the smaller the area, um, obviously the higher the pressure. Okay. So um, the units of pressure, the SI units of pressure, is 1 newton per meter squared. Um, a newton is a unit of force, and meter squared are units for area. Okay, um, and this uh, relationship here is equal to what's known as 1 Pascal, okay, and so uh, you can see this unit come up occasionally, however, there's a slew of other units that are more commonly used, okay, and those units and their relationship to one another can be seen here. So 1 atm is equal to 760 net, uh, millimeters of mercury, um, which is equal to 101.325 kilo Pascals. Um, and that's equal to 760 torr, which is equal to 101, excuse me, 1.01325 um, bar. Uh, so there are a few of these that will be available to you um, on every exam as well as um, on the AP exam. Okay, so this relationship um, between all three of these units of pressure will be provided. Um, otherwise, you're going to need to memorize these relationships here. So barometers are actually a way that we measure atmospheric pressure. So the atmospheric pressure is just all the pressure um, that is exerted on the surface of the Earth um, by the atmosphere that's above it. So obviously the closer we are to sea level, the more atmosphere we're going to have above us, um, and the higher the pressure we'll be experiencing from said atmosphere. So what happens here is we use uh, an instrument, or this is kind of an old school one, um, to measure the uh, atmospheric pressure in millimeters of mercury. So what we've done is we've taken um, a tube called a udiometer, um, filled it with mercury, and inverted it into a container filled with uh, some additional liquid mercury. Um, when we do that, basically what ends up happening is as atmospheric pressure here, um, pressing down on the container of mercury, uh, increases, what ends up happening is that increases the height of this column of mercury. Okay, and so what ends up happening is we measure the height of this column of mercury, and that's what gives us our measurement um, in millimeters of mercury. So uh, one atmosphere of pressure corresponds to 760 millimeters of mercury. So when we look at this measurement here, we're talking about the literal height um, of a column of mercury. So let's go ahead and apply uh, this work um, that we just talked about. So um, in this case, we're being asked to convert the following pressures. Now, you're not always going to be told, hey, you need to convert this. Uh, when we talk about problems in the future, uh, you're going to need to just know that the conversions need to occur um, based on unit evaluations and based on your understanding of how to properly calculate. But Obviously, before you can do the more complicated equations and calculations, we need to be able to do these interconversions simply um, and quickly. So let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, just like with any other conversion, you're going to be utilizing um, basically your dimensional analysis setup. Okay, so what we are given is 22 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so 22 millimeters of mercury, Hg. Okay, that goes into that first box. Now, the question is, what do I want to convert into? Well, in this case, I want to convert into torr. Okay, so I'm going from millimeters of mercury to torr. So I need to look at the um, equality setup here, and I need to figure out what the relationship between millimeter mercury, millimeters of mercury and torr actually is. So if I find millimeters of mercury, 
760 millimeters of mercury is equal to 760 torr. Okay, so that's the relationship, that's the conversion factor. Okay, so in this case, we're going to put what we want over what we have. So we want to be in torr. So I have 760 torr um, to 760 millimeters of mercury. Right? Okay, now obviously this relationship, the 760 and the 760, are, is a one to one relationship. So you're going to get the same numbers out mathematically. Okay? Um, but your conversion process um, needs to be shown uh, in this type of dim dimensional analysis approach. Okay, so millimeters of mercury, millimeters of mercury are going to cancel out. So I'm going to end up with 22 torr as my new unit set. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Um, so let's do another example set. Okay, so once again, I've been given 10 ATM. Okay, so 10 ATM is what I'm starting with. Okay, what I'm wanting to convert into is the kilopascal. Okay, now also guys, please notice that this is kilopascal, KPA. So the K is representing the prefix kilo. So just like kilometer or millimeter or centimeter or those types of things, this kilo is, is that same type of measurement. So if I were to be asking you to convert between kilopascals and pascals, basically that's just decimal movement. Um, the Kevin hates dates because dates cost money approach, um, or you can use the relationship between, you know, kilo and the base unit, just like you have in the past. So please understand that KPA, um, that K is a kilo prefix, um, so that if you need to make any other conversions, you can do so. Okay, now, um, so we don't care about Pascal's for this question, though. They're giving us KPA. That's what they want us to convert into. So if I come up here and look at um, my equality setup, I have 101.325 kilopascals for every one ATM. So that's my relationship. So I want to get into kilopascals. Okay. Um, and one ATM is the relationship between kilopascal um, 101.325 kilopascals and 1 ATMs. It's what I want on top over what I already have, which is ATM. It's going to allow my units to cancel out. ATM and ATM is going to cancel, and this is going to give me 1013.25 kilopascals as my pressure unit. So we can go ahead and look at uh, the next couple calculations. Um, so basically, I'm sorry, this should be 300 with a decimal, apologize. Okay, so I have 300 tor, and I want to convert this into ATM. If I look at the relationship between tor and ATM, I see that I have 760 tor for every one ATM. Okay, divide those out, and that's going to give you 0 0.3947. Okay, so 0 0.39. Five ATM are the units you end up with because TOR and TOR cancel, ATM are left over. Okay, and last but not least, let's go ahead and go um, between TOR and BAR. Okay, so if I want to convert between TOR and BAR, um, 1.01325 um, BAR for every um, 760 TOR. That's the relationship. We're going to multiply this 2 by the uh, 1.01325 and then divide by 760 and that's going to give us our units for um, bar um, in our pressure in terms of bar which is 2.66 times 10 to the negative third um, bar okay so um, this is how you do your pressure um, conversions um, make sure that you're showing your work if you're converting in between um, any types of units uh, you should always be showing how you're doing that, um, especially for pressure, since there's it's not just a decimal movement. It's actually a relationship um, between two different uh, pressure values. You want to make sure that you're indicating that work. That work will be necessary for full credit on all of your work. Um, so just make sure that you get used to showing it and showing it in the format that we just discussed here. Last thing I want to add to this lecture series are standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature and pressure are values that will be given to you on all of your exams on that attached sheet. Um, 
However, you should kind of put them to memory so you're not having to look and spend time finding that on that fact sheet. So standard temperature um, is referenced as zero degrees C and standard pressure is one ATM. Okay, so if you're told in a practice problem or, or on a problem on an exam that the conditions are at STP, that stands for standard temperature and pressure um, and you should know that these are the corresponding values. If you forget what these values are, they are on the back of that answer sheet.